Reading the Rocks. My name is Dave Taylor. I read rocks. They have a story to tell. I photograph wildlife and I write books about their lives. To understand how they survive, I find a need to understand where they live. And to get an understanding of how they live in their habitat, I've learned I need to know about the land that they live on. Doll sheep live in the mountains of the Yukon in Alaska. Well, where did these mountains come from? What stories can they tell me? I learn by looking, reading books, and listening. There is much that can be learned. This is Mount McKinley, now known as Denali. It is the tallest mountain in North America. Doll sheep and caribou live on it. It is 6,194 meters, or 2,230 feet high. It is so high that everything above the height of 3,000 meters is always covered in snow. The mountains below are just under 3,000 meters. I took this picture in July. So how does a mountain or mountain range come to be? Well, the mountains hold clues. Stories have a beginning. The rocks above are several billion years old. They are the top of an ancient mountain. Formations like this are called copies. These are in Africa. Copies are made up of rocks that were once part of the first landmass on Earth. Almost five billion years ago, these rocks were once joined to the rocks that today make up the Canadian Shield. Most of the rocks this old are buried deep beneath the Earth's surface. Here in Tanzania, they can be seen. Scientists believe that the Earth was first formed over 8 billion years ago. It was a hot, gaseous ball. Gradually it cooled, an atmosphere formed cooling it more. The magma cools, the first rocks were forming. Rain began falling. Soon the first ocean formed. The first continent was created. It was surrounded by shallow seas. The planet continued to cool. Forces below the surface caused the new continent to break up. Eventually, the planet would look like it does today. Here, in East Africa, it is possible to see the Earth's forces at work. Tanzania's Serengeti National Park is a good place to begin. It is known for its abundant wildlife and wide, grassy plains. Here you can see the world's largest herd of mammals. There are 1.5 million wildebeest feeding on the Serengeti's grassy plains. And why are they here? Because of the rocks. The great herds attract predators. But the herds couldn't live here unless there was a lot of grass. And the grass is here because of the rocks. Or rather, the rock cycle. There are three types of rocks. You will look at each of these in more detail as you read the rest of this ebook. Igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks. Rocks go through a cycle. Each step in the cycle will be examined in this ebook. So, what is a rock? Rock, noun. A lump or mass of hard, consolidated mineral matter. And what does that mean? The building blocks of all rocks are minerals. Mineral, noun. Minerals are natural compounds formed through geological processes. Minerals range in composition from pure elements and simple salts to very complex silicates with thousands of known forms. What does that mean? The Earth and the Sun and other planets and stars are made up of pure elements. Elements are the building blocks of all matter, rocks, plants, air, and you. They are pure. They do not change. Water is made up of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. This chart shows the known elements. You learn more about this in high school. Some of these elements are also minerals, gold, for example. But some combine to form new minerals. Salt is a good example. A mineral has the same characteristics no matter where it is found. 
but during the formation of rocks, many minerals may be mixed together to form a type of rock. Minerals make up all rocks. Well, you know, for now, that's enough technical stuff. Uh, let's move on.